The 2023 season was full of optimism, with the noise coming out of Ferrari that the team had found an extra 30 horsepower due to sorting out reliability issues. Fast forward to after Bahrain, and the F1 world was left wondering where all the pace had gone. And Charles was thinking, oh no, not again. You would think after just one race, everyone would be keeping a calm head, but not at Ferrari, with the team in disarray. A number of key personnel are leaving the prancing horse. There is driver unrest. This is all being caused by one man, and it's not who you think. Ferrari has not won the coveted F1 title in 15 years, with the last title coming in 2007. And when you are F1's most successful and oldest team, this barren run will hurt. After last season, Ferrari might have thought that they were onto something with the Maranello-based team genuine contenders until a number of reliability issues and strategic errors derailed their season. There was some major upheaval in the winter break, with the team's failures leading to the sacking of Matteo Bonotto and the arrival of Frederic Vassa from Sauber. And the dawn of a new era was to begin, with the Frenchman brought in to build on the great work that Bonotto and the team had done on the car and had some much-needed stability around the stretch strategy at Ferrari. Many fans had been hoping for sweeping changes within Ferrari and a complete overhaul of the strategy team, but according to reports, Vassa was more than happy to observe and make no changes. The Frenchman did eventually make one change, and that was to move the head of strategy to a factory-based role in order to solve the most obvious error that Ferrari had in 2022. Change takes time, and Ferrari won't be able to rid itself of those errors overnight. It may well take a serious overhaul to get the team moving in the right direction, but there were some signs that the strategy at Ferrari was changing, with the team using some interesting strategies with their tyres in order to make sure they had the best possible chance of challenging Red Bull. Ultimately, the Red Bull was too quick, but the Ferrari was on course to take a podium finish in Bahrain, with Charles on course to beat Alonso, but then disaster struck and Leclerc's Bahrain GP ended prematurely on lap 40, after an engine-related issue caused him to retire from the race. We definitely had the car to fight for the podium. I mean, honestly, the podium was there, an exasperated Leclerc said after the race. We had a good gap behind, I was managing the pace, everything felt good, so it is a shame. Now I just hope we can look into it, understand what went wrong, and don't have this problem anymore. Asked if there were any positives to take from the weekend, Leclerc added, I mean the first stint, the choice that we have made was the right one in qualifying yesterday. Apart from that, not much. A frustrating day for the Ferrari driver and even more disappointing for the Tifosi. There was a small silver lining behind Ferrari's failure, as the failure was not due to the same problem that plagued them last season, but was rather due to an energy store and control unit failure. With only two energy store elements allowed during the entire season, Leclerc is set for a grid penalty at some point in 2023. Frederick Vasser demanded his engineers to get to the bottom of the failures and stressed it was vital there was no more problems. He explained, of course we are disappointed, how could we not be? We knew we'd have to deal with tire degradation, but we had not expected reliability problems. After this first race, we have a clear picture of the situation and we know what areas we must work on. We have to improve a lot in terms of tire management and clearly we have to ensure we have no more reliability problems like the one that affected us today. According to Motorsport.com Italia, Ferrari has also identified the cause of the issue which plagued Leclerc in Sakia. The Scuderia believes the wiring broke down simply due to inadequate fastening between the engine and the chassis. They also believe that the first power unit can be salvaged, so there won't be a penalty at Jeddah, but best believe at some point Leclerc will have to serve a penalty due to a failed energy storage. Great news for Charles at this point in time, but Ferrari have genuinely improved by an embarrassing amount compared to Red Bull. And people can argue that Bahrain favors certain teams, but according to the data, Red Bull were just over seven-tenths faster per lap in Bahrain last weekend compared to last year. Ferrari were only 0.003 seconds faster, highlighting the challenges currently facing the Italians. This on top, of the already failing power unit issues, it means that the mood at Ferrari is not a good one, with a number of key personnel either looking to leave or potentially getting the sack. According to the media, a number of key Ferrari staff have put their CVs onto the market, and the first man to leave is David Sanchez, with the highly respected aerodynamicist off to McLaren. 
and now it does get worse for Ferrari. It has been reported that Enrico Cardiel's future is currently uncertain, with the head of chassis potentially on the verge of leaving the Scuderia. To further exasperate matters, assistant team principal Lauren Mekis is also eyeing an exit from Ferrari. Should Mekis decide to leave, then there is no shortage of suitors. Formula 1A Uno reports that Alpine, Liberty Media, and his former employers, the FIA, have all made offers to the French engineer. Formula 1 A, you know, are not alone in their reporting of Mecca's imminent departure. Corriere della Sera stated that the situation between Ferrari and Mecca's is at a standstill, after Vassa reportedly vetoed a deal for Mecca's to work with Formula 1 alongside its president and ex-Ferrari team boss, Stefano Dominicali. The effect a brain drain can have on a team can be devastating. Look at Mercedes, the Silver Arrows are in a hole at the moment so Ferrari will have to be very careful on how and who they replace these potential losses with. At the beginning of the season, Vassa wanted all of his team members to give a bit more. Every single area of every single team has to improve, said the Frenchman. This is important. It's the DNA of my business. We need to have the approach to try to do a better job tomorrow than today. And it's not just the race engineer or the chief of aero. It has to come from every person in the company, including the production. Excellent, but easier said than done, and with many staff members being loyal to Bonotto, change and giving that little bit extra may not exactly be what everyone wants to hear. Bonotto is currently on gardening leave and probably won't be joining Ferrari anytime soon. Well, we don't think so, but weirder things have happened. But it now appears the long-term gardening leave may have been a genius move by Ferrari, as all of the staff that helped build the new SF23 may have actually followed Bonotto to wherever he had ended up. The main culprit behind this is not actually Vassa, but instead Ferrari CEO Vigna, and it is from his involvement that the discontent has arisen, as his role as the sporting manager has become very cumbersome compared to the previous management. A change in structure at Ferrari following Mattia Bonotto's departure has seen Vigna take on more responsibility, and as such, Mekis, along with other senior employees, now report to him. This is not ideal for Mekis, who would prefer to report to new team principal Fred Vassar, but even the former Sauberman's appointment has caused a stir in the corridors of Marinello. The Italian outlet reports that Vassar's appointment was one that suited CEO Vigna, but chairman John Elkin was not convinced, said to have preferred a more prominent character. The cracks run deeper at Ferrari, with Vassar also fed up with how the structure at Ferrari works, with him having less say in what happens. On top of this, he is being told who he can see and who the sponsors of Ferrari need to be. Compared with the nine other team principals, Vassar is said to enjoy far less power over his team. There has been concern around Vassar's relationship with Toto Wolff, with the pair flying into Bahrain together and even sharing a cheeky joke while being interviewed. But according to those at Ferrari, this is not allowed, with the move being frowned upon. There was a further annoyance for Vassa when he tried to bring in a new sponsor, but was told that it didn't work for Ferrari. Not only is the Ferrari team principal annoyed, but so is Charles Leclerc's following Ferrari's disastrous start to the season at the Bahrain Grand Prix. It has been reported by Gazetta Italia that Charles Leclerc asked for a meeting with Ferrari president John Elkin to receive reassurance. It looks like the only one that is not unhappy is Carlos Sainz, unless he is, but we just don't know about it. But he was more optimistic about Ferrari's chances in Jeddah. I believe we can be more competitive in the race because the tarmac allows you to push more, there's less degradation, he told media, including Race News 365.com. We only have one sample, that is Bahrain, with these cars. So we've been here for seven days now running with these cars, and it's clear what our problem is in Bahrain. Let's see what is a problem in Jeddah with different tarmac, but you're also a bit more front tire limited. Maybe it helps us, maybe we are the same, we don't know, but I want to be positive.